I'm going to take a look at a couple parts of, um, this is one of the questions, I can't remember which number this is, it was number four on that year's AP exam, but uh, anyway, uh, this is the train problem on AP prep number five, and uh, you can see here, um, I'm going to let you figure out things in the first two parts, it's an average acceleration, they give you a velocity, so that should just be an average rate of change, and uh, Maybe it sounds like an intermediate value theorem, possibly, in Part B. Anyway, uh, Part C, I did get a couple of questions here. I don't want to go all the way through this uh, necessarily, but um, they ask you to uh, use a trapezoidal sum. And, and be careful, because it's starting out at 300, so don't lose the 300. Um, but, you know, you're basically starting out, uh, well, I'll do part of Part 3. Um, you're starting out at a value of, nice if this would focus, starting out at a position of 300, and then you want to take the integral of the velocity function uh, from the starting time that they give you to the ending time. And, of course, that'll tell you your displacement over that interval. And you add that to your original position, you have your new position. Um, anyway, in this one, uh, they don't give you the function. So you're just going to have to estimate it using the trapezoidal rule. Um, I've always made a big deal about plotting points. So um, at 2, uh, we have a functional value of 100. And at 5, we have a functional value of 40. And at 8, we get kind of the weird thing here. We get a functional value of negative 120. And at 12, uh, we get a functional value of negative 150. So we have a positive velocity, we have a negative velocity. So if you're doing your trapezoidal rule, you're, you're taking half the height uh, times the sum of the bases, and uh, you know, works out pretty quickly. So your first trapezoid piece of cake, uh, your height is three, right? So you're taking half your height times the sum of your bases. No big deal. Um, and then this next one here, I don't have a, you know, normally you connect the two functional values here. Well, if I connect those two pieces, I'm not really going to get a trapezoid because I've got a positive being connected to a negative, okay? Um, and that may kind of throw some people off. However, the formula still works, okay? Uh, for this set of data, even though you can't draw the trapezoid, you can still take half the height. Uh, the height there would be the width between the trapezoids. That's another three. And it's still times the sum of the bases. Uh, it's the 40 and the negative 120. And by the way, if you notice, um, if you take half of the sum of these two numbers, half the sum of these two numbers would average the 40 and the 120. It would tell you kind of on average over that interval what was happening. And then you'd multiply it by the width of the interval. So it's kind of taking average velocity and then multiplying it by a time uh, if you wanted to do it in a little different order. So the, the formula still works, okay? This is a weird case where drawing the picture probably makes it tougher. And then, of course, you can see your third trapezoid right there. Uh, you can do one half. Uh, be careful there. 8 to 12, that's going to have a height of 4. Um, and then you're going to have... Uh, what is that, negative 120 plus, uh, is that negative 150, I think? Um, and remember, when you add all that up, you're going to need to add that to the original 300, okay? So I'll let you finish that, but I just thought that was a case where the, the strategy that I've normally uh, suggested maybe was kind of confusing. All right, part D. Here's where things get uh, kind of interesting. So uh, part B, they say there's a second train uh, travels north. Okay, remember the one train was traveling east. Uh, and then they tell us the velocity function there, and they tell us the time equals 2. It's 400 meters north of the station. Uh, that we want the rate in meters per minute in which the distance between the two t trains is changing. Okay? Now, if you draw a picture of what's going on here, and that's almost always a good idea, even if it didn't work real effectively in the last problem. Uh, remember from part C that the one train was starting 300 meters to the east. Uh, so we've got something kind of like that. Okay, we got this other train up here that's 400 to the north. So I thought maybe one train was going east and one was going west. And so like, you know, if one went, you know, 100 meters per second east and one went 50 meters uh, per minute west, you know, you could just add those two things together. That's how big the distance increases over the, uh, you know, one minute or something. Um, but this is, the distance between them is a diagonal along here. Okay, and that's obviously a little different. So I want to figure out the rate of change of this diagonal. And again, I know that that length is 300, and I know that this other length is 400. Okay, this is an example of a related rates problem. Okay, and we haven't done a lot of related rates lately, which is why I wanted to put this in a video. Um, so remember the idea of related rates is to try to come up with an equation that links the things that you're trying to work with. 
okay? We have a rate of change of this horizontally. Maybe we could call that like a dx dt or something like that. Uh, we have a rate of change of this thing vertically. Maybe we can call that like a dy dt or something like that. But we want to know how far these things uh, change along this diagonal. We want that rate of change, which we could call dz dt, okay? Well, if you think about it, what's a formula that I have that would relate those lengths? This length, that length, and that length. Uh, of course, it's the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So I'm going to call this side x, this side y, and this side z. And so according to the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. Um, and if you remember, the concept here is actually pretty simple. Um, all of these rates, the rate of change with x with respect to t is dx dt, rate of change of y with respect to t is dy dt, dz dt is rate of change of z with respect to t. So I just want to take the derivative with respect to t, it's implicit differentiation, and just get an equation that has x, y's, and z's, and dx's, and dz dt's, and dy dt's, and so on. Um, now, a lot of times, one of your things doesn't change, and maybe you have a constant that goes in place of it, and that's something you have to keep in mind. But in this problem, the x side and the y side and the z side will all change as this train goes this way and that train goes that way, and that hypotenuse will get bigger and bigger. So go ahead and take the derivative. Uh, derivative is 2x times the derivative of x with respect to t, which we write as dx dt, plus derivative of uh, y squared is 2y times the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to 2z times the derivative of z with respect to t. I would divide everything by 2 to get rid of those. And at this point, we should just be able to fill all these values in. Uh, they told me that x was 300. Uh, they told me that y was 400. Okay, um, it's a right triangle, so I can solve for z. This is a three, four, five right triangle. So at that moment in time, z is 500. Okay, we're trying to find dz dt, so we can't fill that in. Um, all right, so they told me in part C that the train is, or no, not in part C, never mind, it's in the table. Uh, at two minutes, the train is moving at 100 meters per minute in the x direction. So we can go ahead and fill that one in as well. And uh, anyway, dy dt here, uh, you will have to go back to the equation. Um, I think if you sub in 2 to the velocity equation here, uh, I think you're going to end up with 125, if I remember correctly. 125 is my final answer. And so anyway, you're going to get uh, 30,000 plus, this is 50,000, is equal to 500 dz dt. And uh, anyway, you should be able to divide 80,000 by 500, and that would give you dz dt, and that's the rate of change of side z in your triangle. And I think that's going to be 160. Go back and look at the units. I think it's uh, meters per minute. Uh, and that ends up being that final rate of change. So a little bit of a challenging problem, but the grand scheme of things is not a terrible related rates problem. So um, if, if you notice you have some kind of uh, geometric relationship like that happening, be on the lookout for that. I think they're gonna work this in on the AP exam somewhere.